when the stain is still fresh. Stain rags can be tossed in the trash with no worries of spontaneous combustion. Dispose of leftover stain material according to local regulations. On hypertone so that video is a great you know conversation start um this powerpoint i threw up are just kind of the top first top topics we get asked a lot you know a lot of people are curious about this idea of an oil water hybrid what does that really mean you know it's not an oil finish so you're not gonna have to worry about rake fires and smells but it's not fully water either so everyone who's had experience with water-based stains in the past this is a whole different animal we're getting so much more uh, compliments on the product's usage, so we really implore people to give us a chance to come out and show you on the project or one of our demos on site. So please contact your local rep for that. Um, water popping, because it's a water-based stain, that's a common question. It doesn't raise the grain like guys are used to seeing with traditional water-based stains of the past. So water popping is still a benefit. It helps with color depth. It helps with uh, any kind of scenario with dense species like hickories or exotics and things like that. Um, and one of the big pluses is it doesn't have to be fully dry before you start staining. The water content in the wood versus the water content in the stain itself do not combat each other. Um, sweat. Guys love the fact that they can sweat while they're staining the floor and it doesn't leave a spot. Um, as the video showed, even though it seems strange to apply stain with a roller, it's still the best method. Um, what tends to happen when guys lay down a water-based stain too thin or they stretch it too far, it doesn't give you then the even saturation, which is where some of your lap lines come into play, your inability to wipe off the excess stain uniform. So putting it down on a heavier method than what you're used to with oil is key. Funny thing is, even though it looks like we're flooding the floor with stain, you're still getting seven to 800 feet per gallon. So that's why we like the bucket, the microfiber roller, and then kind of working across the room as you go. Um, when we talk about the re removing of the stain with the rags, a lot of people kind of question why we can't use t-shirt. A lot of it has to do with absorbency. Because when you're talking about making sure all that stain is removed, I just like terry cloth best. So that's why we recommend it. Um, when you're wiping the stain, Working on those lap lines as a key focus point helps you prevent the lap line. Every time I've been on a job where the guy struggled a little bit, found out they just didn't wipe those laps thoroughly enough, hence leaving a dual layer of stain in that space, getting your lap line. Um, of course, colors can be mixed. Funny thing is guys keep asking it, can you mix these colors? We have a significant list of talking points that we try to go over. In these scenarios, we like to do a little bit more Q&A. Robert and I are working on assembling a, a long list of questions that tend to come into play. Um, but we can review some of that. If you guys got some questions, let's, let's hit them. Yeah, I think, Tim, uh, I think it's a good comment that you're making about um, just telling guys that it's not really hard to use this stain. It's just different. Um, there's certain things that you want to do similar to um, other stains, but there's certain things that you don't want to. Um, and, and, and when somebody asks me about this, uh, the hypertone stain, I usually tell them, whatever you're used to doing for uh, another uh, type stain, you just, you don't want to do it. It's, it's a different technology. Um, uh, where it's similar is to uh, make sure that you water pop the floor and um, that you make sure you uh, wait an uh, appropriate amount of time and you get enough of the stain off the floor. And other than that, you should be good. Uh, some of the questions that come up a lot, uh, here's some of them, um, which is, uh, can you use denatured alcohol to water pop? You don't want to, no. Um, one, it's not necessary. The reason guys are using denatured is to help speed up that water pop dry time so they can go to a solvent-based stain. That doesn't affect our stain. The negative is if the denatured alcohol is still residually there on the surface, it can cause problems with the stain binding to the wood surface properly. So you don't need it. Don't do it. You don't have to wait for it to be fully dry anyways. There's no reason to do it. One of the questions that comes up a lot and it just popped up on my screen here is, do we ever get lap marks? And if so, how do you address it? 
You can get a lap marks just like you do with oil stain, yes. So a simple solution for a lap mark, if you do end up having one is, before you put your first coat of sealer down or finish, take a maroon pad with absolutely no pressure, lightly work that lap line, get that dust vacuumed off that floor, put your first coat of sealer or finish down. Um, now you had mentioned something about uh, not having to wait uh, for the floor to fully dry. Can you kind of dig into that a little bit for some of this uh, stain? Sure. So when you water pop a floor, there's multiple methods. I like to use a garden sprayer with a T-bar or lamb's wool to make sure it's even. You see that the wood looks wet. So if you get a point now where let's use oak, for example, your open grain will tend to dry slower than the closed grain. If that floor where all the closed grain is now dry, where it's back to that raw wood look, you're safe to start staining. If there's a puddle on the floor because you laid it too heavy, you got to let that dissipate first. But as long as, let's say, 70% of that floor looks dry, you're ready to go. You can start staining. Does that help? For sure. Um, one question that we get asked, I think every time I've done a presentation, I've ever seen you do a presentation is, can you use rags to apply the stain? If you rag it on, you're going to put it on too thin and too inconsistent, and no, you're going to have problems with color lines and color inconsistencies across that floor. Um, because water base will dry a little quicker than oil, you got to put it on in a generous amount so you get an even color pattern. Um, can the product be buffed on? It can, but what we're trying to do now is teach the basics. Like Robert said, the technology is new. You can't just treat it like you've been treating a different solvent or oil-based stain. So learn the basics of the product, then move on to the next step of learning how to buff it. Once you get a feel for it, you'll have a better chance of being able to buff it in successfully. Uh, what about softwoods like pine, fir, et cetera? Do you have to do any extra pep work or prep work, not pep work? No, but I do get a question about whether this will erase sander marks like water popping can sometimes do. The answer is no. You still got to sand the floor accordingly so that you don't see the edger marks, the sander marks that the stain would normally highlight with any other stain on it in the marketplace. Uh, how do you fix a light or mist spot? Ah, that's a really tough one. So if it's the same day that you're staining, go ahead and re-wet that area and re-wipe it even. If it's the next day and the stain is fully dry, you have to find a way to isolate that situation. Sometimes it's a matter of basically feathering it in, which they call chasing the grain. Some people know that term. We're not gonna go too deep into that. Or you basically isolate the boards where that light spot is, restain those boards and rewipe those boards. Uh, which kind of leads into another question, which is uh, if I apply the stain, can I apply the finish the same day? Or sealer, I guess, on top of that. It is possible, yes, but I will argue that when you water pop and stain, that's two water applications to that wood floor on the same day. That's as much as we really like to recommend for fear of cupping, checking, any kind of scenario that can happen with a wood by putting too much water on in a short period of time. So if I you're not going to water pop the job, you can coat it the same day. I, when, when I get that question, I usually tell people, listen, there's so many uh, features and benefits to this product and this technology. Um, why would you at the last minute ruin it? So uh, whatever you would do as far as how much time you would wait for an oil-based stain, I would recommend the same thing. Um, that's usually how I answer it. And, you know, some people are just going to do it anyway. Sometimes a repair might require them to try and speed up the process a little bit. That would be the only uh, scenario where you're going to put a fan on it. You're going to accelerate it to help. But you're right, Robert. The key to a job is you want to get paid for the project. Don't rush the, rush the system. Yeah, one last question, which you know, I think we, 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 we see out in the market just about every month. You're going to get some email blast from somebody about a, a fire on a project. So talk to us a little bit about uh, whether the rags can combust and um, versus oil-based stains. Well, this goes back to that number one comment in uh, kind of my quick list there. Even though there's an oil component, it is not combustible. So every one of these rags naturally have a water content in them. When they dry, they don't generate heat, which would tend to happen with oil stains. They will not combust. 
in a confined space due to them all gassing and drying. So no, as a matter of fact, what's great about the product is if you get a little bit of it on your hands, you can soap and water clean it off. So the product really has a lot of versatility for the clean and the non-hazardous side. Awesome, thank you. Um, so with that, we're at our, with our uh, 20 minute mark and I'm gonna leave us as uh, I always do with two little things. One is just to remind everybody that we've got a floor of the month, floor of the year contest uh, that's going on out in the marketplace these days. And contractor, all he's got to really do is uh, post the pictures and give a description of the products that they've used and uh, use hashtag wood floor proud and they automatically get entered into the contest. I know some contractors don't have Instagram accounts so some of our sales guys are posting the, the projects for them. And then also uh, Floor Mechanics is doing a, a special these days. Uh, buy two gallons of Pure Mat, you get one gallon of raw sealer for free, which is a new product that we have out in the marketplace. We're doing some webinars on the raw sealer and Pure Mat as well. And with that, uh, Mr. Nathan, appreciate uh, your help and assistance today and appreciate everybody joining us on the, on the webinar. Right here. And uh, if you like this webinar, make sure you tell other people that uh, you're attending these and we're short and sweet and getting to the point. And, and uh, with that. Can I add a quick comment for you, Robert? Sure. Contact your local basic rep. He'll come out and help you understand our product line. They're new, we're innovative. We've got new products that people don't always know about. Get a hold of your basic rep. We'll come out to the job with you. Excellent point. All right, Tim, everybody have a good, uh, ha happy, safe uh, holiday weekend and take care of yourselves. And if there's any questions, uh, feel free to give us a call. Thank you. Happy